Summit Fund, we came by to look at something that, uh, well, we've seen this a lot before, but we haven't seen all of it before. This is a Quicksilver Sprint. This is a, I'm told, a legal 103 airplane. I say it that way because Andy and Matt weighed the airplane. I didn't. But we're going to come to that in a moment. I'm Dan Johnson, and we're talking with Andy. I didn't get your last name. Humphrey. Andy Humphrey. And Matt? Dandar. Dandar. So we're talking to these guys who did something amazing here. Matt, why don't you start out because it's, it's the engine that you represent for the Hearth Company, and then Andy will pull you in to talk about how you managed to make this work here. Yeah. Go ahead, Matt. All right. Andy and I have been in association for a long time. He was a Challenger dealer, and he, he, he sells our Hearth engines on his Challenger. And this year he became a, Hearth, a Quicksilver dealer. And I've been working on this project with Quicksilver for a couple of years, but we've never been able to get the engine mounted. Uh, but you this, said Quicksilver actually bought the engine from Oh you? yeah, they bought the engine and originally. They, they wrenched on it for a while, couldn't make it work. Couldn't make it work. All right. So uh, Andy was able to arrange to bring the whole project back to Ohio, and we worked on it. And the trick to it, the F-23, this is an F-23 opposed two-cycle engine, 50 horsepower. It only weighs 71 pounds, which is how this plane is legal. Without a parachute, it's legal ultralight. But it's a hard engine to install because of the opposed cylinders, dual exhaust, you put it on top, you got to punch the exhaust through. Um, so what we did was we inverted the cylinders, we removed the cylinders, turned them 180 degrees, had to turn the pistons too. Now the, that, that, that takes the carburetors from being underneath to being up here. Yeah, earlier you told me the carburetors got to be on top on this uh, engine. Yeah, because of this thing called gravity. Uh, when you have them underneath, the gravity makes the fuel pool in the intake manifolds and it won't idle. Ah, okay, it'll, it'll, okay. run up it's, it's, it'll run, but it won't it idle. Won't down run, right? I yeah. see, because we've seen carburetors on the bottom before. Yeah, if, yeah. But okay, these, I got the message. These now. curved manifolds create a problem. Now, that meant you had to have some new motor mounts or something then to make this work, right? I mean, oh, yeah. Well, that, that by doing that, by inverting the engine, now the motor mount bolts are on top and the exhaust is under here. We made an exhaust that keeps it all out, out of here, out of, I mean, out of, out of the way. And but there was no room for the motor mounts because the carburetors are up here. So Andy built this ah, thing. Ah, okay, okay. It's uh, reinforced with a plate and two angles, and we where bearing mounts are usually to the side on a horizontal plane, they're on a vertical plane. But they still the engine still shakes the same direction, and the and the mounts still crush the same way. Works just fine. So well, together we got it on there, Andy. This is uh, Andy put the plane together and so tested Andy, it. So uh, Andy, what? How did? You, how do you? I mean, I heard what you contributed to this, but how is it you knew stuff like this? Well, we've been doing different engine installations. We just finished an F-23 on a cold Firefly, also. Ah, yeah, okay. Well, so you knew so the engine already. I yeah. already knew the engine. Another, another tough installation. I was very excited about this because the Quicksilver dealer. We've got a, a wonderful airframe and no new engine to sell with it. So basically our sales strategy has been, here's the airframe, go find a used engine and put on it. Yeah, it's not a really good sales strategy. It doesn't work. Yeah. And, and I understand the challenge in a part 103, staying within that weight. Now I want to ask you again, just to clarify. First of all, Matt, how much does the engine weigh? 70 pounds, you said? It's 71 with recoil like we have it, and 77 with our electric start. And compare that to, let's say, the uh, Rotax 447 that has powered this kind of airplane for a long time. It weighs no eight, longer available. It weighs 87 pounds. Okay, so that's actually quite a bit more weight than this one yeah and yet this puts out more horsepower than yep, that 10 one. more horsepower and dual ignition to boot and it's all liquid uh, excuse me it's all air cooled yeah uh, obvious from the cooling fins and uh, just a gear reduction drive excuse me a belt reduction drive yeah uh, is that your drive that's Hearst drive yeah. that's Hearst drive okay so Andy what made you think you could help Matt do all this a quick silver approach me and said hey can you can you take a look at this you know Matt you're in Hearst you know see what you can do with it you're in Hearthland, kind yeah, of. Yeah, okay, you're pretty close. Yeah. You know, we've been dealing with Hearth engines for about 10 years now with Challengers and done a lot of different installations. And I've got one on my personal Challenger. Uh, so we went down to Louisiana, picked up the airplane, brought it home, uh, went to work on it uh, about six weeks before the show. So it was kind of a rush job, as <laughs> yeah. it always is. Yeah, we it always good. is, it so seems. When I got the airplane, of course, the carburetors were on the bottom and the exhaust laid up here the way it was here last year at the show. Ah, okay. Uh, but it won't run right that way. So, you know, we started out flipping the cylinders and pistons over, uh, which worked great, but then our intakes hit the, the engine mount that was there. So we had to redesign the engine mount. That worked fine, you know, you see what we came up with. Uh, yeah, again, it, it just looks simple to yeah. me, but, you know, the best it's, ideas probably are simple and they are also difficult to achieve. Yeah, this this is an all-new exhaust mount, too. This is the first time we've ever done this. It worked out quite well. Well, I bet you Quicksilver has got to be quite happy with you making this work, but I have to ask, uh, which one of you flies it here or has flown it? You've been flying it? 
a, a legal 103 that is uh, 200 and less than 254 pounds. You said what, 248, 249? 248 as it sits here. So, and Matt, I've got to interrupt myself here to say that you said that this one's got pull start, a recoil start on it. Mm -hmm. And because of that weight difference that Andy just mentioned, you could actually do electric on it. Yes, with battery a, with and all? A lightweight battery, yes, you could do it. Wow, that's a pretty amazing thing. So, now back to Andy. How's this thing fly with 50 horsepower on a 103 airplane? It's incredible. Home it's 6 it's Angel, it's like heaven bound, huh? Oh, yeah. Is that why you named the company that? <laughs> <laughs> Almost, we, huh? This airframe stalls at 16 indicated, and we can climb out That's at 16 miles an hour. 16 miles an hour. You're not even knots, so wow. Climbing at 20 mile an hour, I mean, the, the, the <laughs> angle of climb is insane. And how about the ground roll? It's got to be like Very pretty brief. Yeah, it's like 25 feet, good conditions. <laughs> yeah. It is a lot of fun. For well, those of you with short you runways, you got you no idea, huh? You, you can lift off in 35? Yeah, 35 I mean, feet. 35 yeah, feet in until... Cool weather, we were off in 25. It's, wow. It's amazing. Wow. Most of the guys that fly at Chris flew today, he was a Quicksilver dealer, and uh, he was afraid to give it full power on takeoff. <laughs> <laughs> and he's flown them forever. Well, you know, for a Part 103 aircraft, that by itself is kind of an amazing statement. I didn't yeah, want to give it full power. Usually you got to give it all they've got and still wish exactly. for more. Yeah. So, Well, Matt, you've done a lot with the F-30 in the past, yeah. which is, I believe, 28 horsepower. Is that the right number? It's, it's F-33. F-33, I'm yeah, sorry. And that's yeah. 28 horsepower? Yeah. Yeah. Now that makes this airplane fly okay, but nothing like 50 horsepower. My goodness. Yeah, yeah. If you're at high altitude, or going to go with floats, or if you're a, a wow. typical American, weigh 250 more pounds, you know. We you like know. our hamburgers. Yeah, here. Be that's careful. right. That's right. <laughs> it, I mean, it, it, this this extra power will come in handy. Sure, I can see that. Now, does can I also interpret that uh, this is sometimes called a boxer engine because the, the pistons are like boxing, I guess, where that term comes from. Does it also run smoother than the F-33? Oh yeah, yeah. Opposed engine, the pistons fire like this. They so they kind of absorb some of their own energy. They, Is that they, the idea? They, they they absorb their own internal uh, inertia, and so it, it completely it's smoother than an inline. Yeah. Well, you know, we always. I, I want to go to the next question, and I have to preface this a little bit. We try and stay away from cost on these videos because they can be around years. People looking at these in the future, perhaps, but. Give me in the ballpark anyway for today and the number changes folks go to Matt later find out what the number is when you actually watch the video but what's the number today on on an engine like this ballpark well the the engine itself is 5700 with electric start with yeah. electric even. yeah okay and we we estimate the installation package to be like five five fifty okay so for about six grand so about six grand it. you can have a quite powerful part 103 airplane what does the airframe sell for Andy your dealer the airframe right now is 10 3. Ten three. Yeah. What we need to also That's clarify: there are some modifications to the airframe as well. Yeah. Tell me about the modifications to the airframe. Uh, we have shortened the root tube. Uh, we had to drill another hole from the engine mount. There's generally on the original one there's a, a cable that goes from here down to here. Ah, uh, yeah. I kind of remember that. Uh huh. So we we moved that cable to the head of the engine and taken it up to the tri bar. Okay. And that accomplishes the same attentioning purpose. Exactly. So and of course we've done away with the whole shaft drive system. That's been removed. So we're still kind of working on details on pricing because when we sell the airframe, we can deduct that whole shaft drive system. That's like ah, five hundred dollars. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so at any rate, well under twenty thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, more like fifty. And this is yeah. a kit that takes how many hours would a would an average builder tackling it his first time? How long would it take him to build the airframe? They say forty. That's not real realistic. But you know, sixty to eighty first timer. Yeah, uh, that's you it. know, that's that's a couple of months of part time. Yeah, exactly. And you got it together, and we know how Quicksilver puts kits together. Yeah. Probably the best organization I've ever seen in parts and how you handle them on those. Absolutely. Uh, booster pack, I think they call them, uh, part boards. Yeah. Very well designed. All right, so uh, Andy, you talked about uh, how long it takes to build a kit, but this is a Part 103 airplane. No pilot's license, no medical, no end number, right. and you can deliver it ready to fly. Absolutely. Are you willing to do that? Yes. And is that what you do? Yes, that's what okay, we do. Okay, so you obviously know about this mount, about the engine. You've already solved that problem. Now repeating it should be relatively easy. Absolutely. Right um, now we will build this in our shop for the customer with this engine. Eventually, we hope to offer it as a factory option with the kit, but we're not ready yet. We have to update the documentation and the parts. And sure, sure. Take some time. But the beauty of that is it's whatever you choose to create on that, and if you're going to fully build them yourself, you need a lot less instruction for people because you just go ahead and put it together. Right. So what would a flyaway version of this go for in today's market? And uh, depending on how we equip it, we're probably going to be somewhere in the 18 neighborhood. <laughs> okay, listen to that again. Less than $20,000, well under $20,000, for a ready-to-fly airplane that's going to perform like crazy. Oh yeah. Uh, and 
you can get training in this airplane because Quicksilver does have a special light sport aircraft version. There's a lot of used ones out there too and a program called LODA that uh, uh, instructors can use if they've got an airplane already. But if you don't have that, you can buy a brand new Quicksilver, learn how to fly, pay somebody to teach you how to fly, and then get in this thing and go see how big that grin can get. Andy, oh, yeah. Andy has that cover too. He, he has a two-seat Quicksilver. Yeah, he can do all right, so you can do it all up there. Yeah. Right well, let's, uh, let's grab a service. couple of web addresses here. Engine-related stuff. You want to see Matt Dander and you want to go to... Uh, uh, www.recpower.com Okay, we'll website. put that up on the screen for everybody so yeah. that's clear. Andy, where's your uh, web address? Uh, Heavenboundaviation.com Okay, and again, your location? Johnstown, Ohio. Okay, where's that related to something? Uh, we're right near Columbus, right in the center of the state. Okay, near we Columbus, do. Ohio, right in the center. We and that, you're not very far away, right? No, I'm 105 miles from him. I'm up in northwest Ohio. All right, so if some extra wrenching on the engine was needed, uh, you're close at hand. Yeah, I just fly down and help. <laughs> Real good stuff. Well, thanks a lot for uh, giving us all this information. It's real exciting. I'm a 103 fan. I've been hearing about an uptick in interest in 103. Oh, yeah. And I'm guessing that this engine and engines like it are probably have something to do with that. So, lots more about affordable aviation of all kinds available at bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Andy, Matt, and myself here at Sunnyfire.